You know what they say? That which does not kill us makes us stronger. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about box cake mixes and why they are tools of communism. Yes, you heard me correctly. I once had someone tell me, you conservatives think everything is communism. Well, when it is though, it is. So let's back up a little bit and explore this topic. I might have just a bit of a reputation for being a little bit of a 1950s lover. It's true. I love June Cleaver and I'm not embarrassed to say it. And I've received some criticism for it, prompting me to make a video exploring the truth about the 1950s, the good, the bad, the pearls, really put my value system to perspective and to the test. What I found is my philosophy of traditionalism, which happens to be traditionalist conservatism, does not require I disavow June Cleaver. It's perfectly understandable to note what went wrong prior to the 1950s that set up its infamous materialism and consumerism, while also noting that the community, religious, and family aspects of the suburban 1950s were far better than they were are today. It's the of another world yet still modern that makes it so easy for people with traditional values to look back at the 1950s in a relatable way. It's not the end-all be-all of traditionalism, but it is a good jumping off point for some people. Even though we are in this age of signaling on the internet of how intelligent we are, I never saw a good reason to throw June Cleaver under the bus to make myself seem more intelligent. But she was a loving, happy, stay-at-home, Mom, which I think is great. Barbara Billingsley went to the grave defending June, and so will I. June Cleaver did nothing wrong. <laughs> anyway, moving on. There's one aspect of the 1950s that I absolutely cannot stand, and it just, it, it irks me. It, it enrages me. And it's the convenience food. Boxes, cans, mixes, frozen swans and meals. If you haven't ever looked into the story of how Julia Child saved the American homemaker kitchen from the fate of convenience food, you should take a look. I know Julia was a leftist, but what she did was truly remarkable. People today think that mastering the art of French cooking is some elaborate style of cooking and they are intimidated to even open it. But little do people know, it was actually marketed to the American housewife. Why did we ever decide to do this anyway? What were we thinking? Who can remember? I can. We wanted to write a French cookbook for American women who do not have cooks. So then, that's what we'll do. At this time in the early 60s, many American housewives had given in to convenience foods, but Julia came in with her book and television show, The French Chef, and told these women to demand a certain cut of meat at the butcher's or buy this produce, and if it's not available, then to request it in. In the 60s and 70s, the American housewife transformed supermarkets and made a return to home cooking because of Julia Child's influence. But again, let's go back. Before Julia Child, there was psychology. Sigmund Freud had this idea of the individual that in our unconscious, we have these dangerous and dark desires. Therefore, democracy was dangerous as it elevated the individual, which would elevate these dark desires. Freud argued that the masses need to be controlled. Freud's nephew, Edward Bernays, took his uncle's analysis a bit further and concluded that the control, which must be over society, should be psychological manipulation. Bernays sought to tap into a person's desires in sort of a superficial way to appeal to those desires through marketing and consumerism, and as a result, the masses would be pacified and easily controlled. Bernays is referred to as the father of public relations for having coined the term and being an early pioneer in the marketing field. One of Bernays' early works was in Lucky Cigarettes was convincing women to take up smoking. But everybody else's tobacco is toasted. No, everybody else's tobacco is poisonous. Lucky strikes is toasted. 20th century psychiatrist Abraham Brill told Bernays that the cigarette represented the penis and women would only start buying and smoking cigarettes to feel liberated from or have power over men. That when a woman smokes, she essentially has her own penis. Bernays convinced early feminists to do demonstrations with cigarettes and in no time at all, it became fashion for women to smoke. Decided we would get debutantes to light torches of freedom in the Easter parade to protest man's inhumanity to women by the taboo against smoking. Within six weeks, smoking became an accepted pattern for women throughout the United States. 
Like many of our packaged and convenience foods today, the box cake mix was invented during the 1930s with the Depression and war rations in mind. During the Second World War, box cake mixes provided food for the troops with just the need for adding a bit of water to the mix. In the late 1940s, General Mills debuted Betty Crocker cake mix to take a wartime invention to the supermarkets to be sold to the general public. Betty Crocker is a fictional name used for marketing to represent a mother and the American homemaker. And here's Betty Crocker herself. And this is what we're so excited about. My new marble cake mix. But the American homemaker didn't respond well to Betty Crocker box cake mixes. Sales weren't great and General Mills wanted to know why, so they hired market researcher and psychologist Ernest Dick Dieter Ditcher. I don't know. He was trying to get out of people's mind the unconscious motivations that they had for purchasing. Uh, these could be sexual, they could be psychological, they could be sociological, they could be a demand for status, a demand for recognition. There were things that people couldn't verbalize or wouldn't verbalize because they were too secret to them. They were too much a part of their nature and they, were, they would be embarrassed. They would be embarrassed if they came out and said things like this. Ernest applied Bernays methods of psychoanalysis to marketing and created the first focus group. In this focus group of American homemakers, the women were told to free associate about box cake mix. The data coming back was the homemaker felt guilty for not spending more time on the cake. Like, she let her family down. Maybe she wanted to have an answer back for those feminists who said, what do you do all day? So she couldn't just spend 10 minutes making a cake. I don't know. But the homemaker didn't actually like the just add water style of cooking. It led to guilt. In other words, he understood that the barrier to the consumption of the product was the housewife's feeling of guilt about using it. They basically, on one hand, wanted to make it easy for themselves, but they felt guilty about it. So what you've got to do in those circumstances is remove the barrier, the barrier being guilt. The way you do that is to give the housewife a greater sense of participation. And how do you do that? By adding an egg. So what did General Mills do? They took out the powdered eggs and made you add your own egg. Sales skyrocketed. Box cake mixes were flying off the shelves. Today, it's even common for the directions to have you also add your own oil and eggs. Some women often confuse making a cake from scratch and using a mix because I added my own oil and eggs. I've been in some awkward social situations where I asked someone, did you make this? And they said yes. And I said, can I ask about the recipe? And they say it's from a mix and I don't know what to say next, so I just freeze. <laughs> and this recipe starts off with just a yellow cake mix. Two shots of vodka. But what does all this have to do with communism? Remember, this all started with Freud and his belief that the masses need to be controlled. I discovered some important new facts about the unconscious and psychic life the role of instinctual urges and so on. Out of these findings grew a new science, psychoanalysis, a part of psychology. Freud's psychology was used in the infamous Frankfurt School from the early 20th century to come up with critical theory and attack Western civilization via cultural Marxism. Eric Fromm was one of the few critical theorists of the Frankfurt School to discuss gender. One of the criticisms neo-feminist Marxists have of the Frankfurt School is that it wasn't feminist enough. But Enric Fromm penned essays of proposed matriarchal society and how attributes of that society would be a Marxist utopia. In this essay, Fromm criticizes patriarchal societies, which cross applies to Marxist feminist leaders, including Simone de Beauvoir and Betty Friedan. Fromm suggests in his essay that a matriarchal society would be one where sexuality is free from Christianity, egalitarianism and tolerance would be the guiding principles, and private property does not exist. Ingalls and or The Origin of Family, Private Property, and the State in 1884 argues that private property and the institution of marriage would lead to prostitution and the enslavement of women. Simone de Beauvoir in The Second Sex in 1949 wrote, with its endless repetition, the clean becomes soiled and the soiled is made clean over and over. Day after day, the housewife wears herself out, marking time. She makes nothing, simply perpetuates the present, eating, sleeping, cleaning. The years no longer rise up toward heaven. They lie spread out ahead, gray and identical. The battle against dust and dirt is never won. 
Betty Friedan in The Feminine Mystique in 1964 wrote, Women who adjust as housewives, who grow up wanting to be just a housewife, are in as much danger as the millions who walked to their own concentration camps. They are suffering a slow death of mind and spirit, as well as stating that no woman ever received an orgasm shining the kitchen floor. Well, it's been my experience that people who talk about it a lot don't do it very often. <laughs> An example of the sexual liberation Eric Fromm suggests would be ideal in an anti-Christian matriarchal society. The Frankfurt School laid the foundations for combining Marxist economic policies and Freudian psychology and sought out to deconstruct traditional institutions such as church and family. The patriarchal nuclear family where a woman depends on her husband and cooks for her family is a roadblock to their Marxist utopia of egalitarianism and sexual liberation. The box cake mix was sold on Freudian psychology and with less time the little woman has in the kitchen the more time she has to pick up smoking, sit in a psychologist's chair and learn about her inner self with a capital S that comes from young, have an affair or leave her family entirely. With divorce rates skyrocketing in the 1960s and 70s due to second wave feminism, that's exactly what happened. Uh, this shows that the ego is not really separate from the self, it's really a part of the self. The self is the totality, the ego is what we're conscious of and the rest of it is what we're unconscious of. And so we're trying to uh, understand uh, the goal of life is to realize the self, is to make conscious that of which we are currently unconscious. How do you feel toward your husband? How do you feel uh, inside of you? My husband's a great teaser. You know what he what? teases mm -hmm. terribly, you know, and a uh, practical joker. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, he never stops, you know, and I, I do have this feeling every time he upsets me. I mean, there's been times when I've thought, oh, if I had a knife in my hand, I'm sure I'd put it right in you. Yeah. I hate you so much for doing this to me. If I can't say what I want to say, but I just don't say anything at all. What did you feel like telling him that you didn't tell him? I tell him to go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> I do most of the time feel like saying that. So next time someone tells you you're a food snob for not liking cake mixes, just say, no, I'm not a food snob, I'm anti-communism. Thank you so much for joining me in this video about cake mixes and communism. Stay tuned for the final, final review of Mrs. America. The one where we go over the Reagan episode, episode nine of the nine episode series. We are almost done and I'll see y'all in the next video. Hope you're doing well. God bless. Take care. Bye. Oh, Simka, I am so sorry. You just picked the wrong collaborator. Yes, I should have worked with this woman. Baked Alaska in a flower pot. Oh, what is marshmallow fluff? Oh. Oh.